Hey everyone, episode 64 is out, which means it's time for a detailed analysis. This episode is an intermediate one, but there are a lot of things worth talking about in it. Today we're going to discuss Titan Cameraman's improvements, the Skibidi toilet trap, and Da Fuch's epic appearance in this episode. I'll show you all the secrets and Easter eggs. We'll analyze all of Skibidi's new inventions. As always, get your tea and snacks ready. Watch the video to the end, it's going to be amazing. Let's go! At the very beginning we see a strange situation. Skibidi Toilet is running away from something along with the agents. They don't try to fight amongst themselves. What's this speakerman doing here? Is he trying to flush this Skibidi out or is he just hooking up to ride him? We look out from around the corner and see the other agents running away with Skibidi Toilet from a huge mutant. There's a G-Man flying around behind them and his eyes are there. Apparently what we saw in episode 62 was just light reflection and glares. That said, he no longer wears glasses, although he does have headphones. And all the other Skibidi don't have them. I think it's a trap and G-Man wants to lure the Titans straight to the Skibidi scientist. But we'll talk about that later. Skibidi helicopter flies by but doesn't attack anyone, it's weird. After a little while we see him crash. His toilet is on fire and you can see some kind of attached thingy on the rotor. I have no idea what it is. I haven't seen things like that before, but it seems like it's what caused him to lose control and explode. What about the explosions at the beginning? If the Skibidi helicopter has all the rockets in place, then who was firing here? It was this mutant. He's got cannon on the side. That's a vacuum toilet, by the way. It's the same one we saw in episode 46. Back then, the Skibidi were trying to come up with a defense against the TV Man Titan. So the previous vacuum toilet didn't have eyes and ears. Also, Titan destroyed him at the end of the episode. I don't think it's him. It's unlikely that the Skibidi were able to reanimate this guy. But the toilet is the same one used. You can get a better look at it from this picture from the leak in Dafuk's Discord. The head is exactly the same, by the way, only it no longer has the iron pins in the eyes and ears. The new vacuum mutant has some sort of oven inside. Perhaps it also sucks in everything in its path, but through a different place. Notice that it's destroying the Skibidi just as it's destroying the agents. I'm thinking he's here out of the blue to get the Titans' attention while they're flying over the place. That's why the Skibidi toilets didn't have time to hide and just run away from this monster. This is where this poor speakerman hangs and tries to survive. Hopefully he managed to jump off and run away when the vacuum toilet stopped. The mutant has a powerful jetpack in the back that helps him gain speed. Also, did you notice that cameraman who was able to hide from the vacuum monster? I'm surprised the other guys didn't do the same. So far, everything's going according to the Skibidi Toilet's plan. The Titans were flying by and noticed that a lot of agents were being destroyed in this place. They stopped to help them and destroy the monster, but it was only a lure. Further in front of the Titans, G-Man and the new Skibidi mutant appeared. It would have been right for one of them to destroy the Skibidi tank and the other to fly behind the G-Toilet. But the Titans seem to have been shocked by the mutant stuffed with explosives and decided to destroy him together. We see Alliance planes and helicopters flying nearby, so it's the same squad we saw at the end of episode 63. Notice how big the vacuum toilet was and how it folded up after the hammer blow. By the way, Titan Cameraman has some new upgrades. I noticed it back in episode 63 but I thought it would be two new guns. Let's see what the scientist did for him. First of all, he has the same rotating cannon again. This time the cannon looks wider, but we don't see it firing. Titan also has a shield that looks like a defense screen. This is the most useful improvement, I think, because he was already very well armed. What he lacked was defense. Remember how he defended himself with a metal shield in episode 20? Well, here he had no shield and had to use a piece of roof. The final improvement is the ability to shoot from his finger. We saw this in episode 23, but then he was firing from his left hand. For some reason, the improved Titan has never used this ability before. It releases a sort of energy blob that explodes after a while. I don't think this is very effective in quick battles. And here he just destroyed four weak helicopters. Now let's take a look at the new Skibidi tank Kamikaze. His toilet is white, although Skibidi has been using gray ones for a long time. That's because this toilet doesn't need to defend itself. It's just a decoy. In place of a jetpack, he has canisters with wicks and explosives. There are bombs attached to his protective plate on the front. They have yellow lettering on them that says large explosion. The mutant's back has a lot of barrels, most likely with acid. 
I'm pretty sure this is the same acid that destroyed the Titan cannon and Alliance tank in Episode 55. The Skibidi realized it was a weakness and made a new enhanced weapon against the Titans. But most importantly, it's two cannons with acid shells. Look at how this works. This is where the explosives are. This is where the gunpowder burns. And in the middle, you can see the barrel of acid. You see this green cloud. It's very similar to the acid vapor in episode 55. If the Alliance scientists hadn't found out about this and improved Titan, he could have been badly damaged. Apparently, the Alliance is still one step ahead of Skibidi Toilets in the technology development. Generally, this shield is the strongest defense in the Skibidi Toilet series so far. The second rocket flies at Titan Speaker Man, but misses. He has no defense, by the way. If the rocket had hit, it could have done some serious harm to him. There's a trap sign on the screen, as if someone wanted to help the Titans to be more careful. But I think they already figured it out. This Skibidi can't be attacked with cannons and otherwise everything around him will explode and be hit by acid vapor. Titan Speakerman flew up behind him and flushed him, but the trap didn't end there. The mutant's self-destruct mode was activated. And that's pretty dumb, I think. First of all, if Skibidi scientists had made that kamikaze fly, he could have crashed at high speed into the Titans and exploded. They succeeded in episode 20 with the reactive toilet, but they didn't think of that a second time here. Second, why not put the explosives in the cistern? Then Skibidi would explode immediately after someone tried to flush him. Skibidi gave Titan Cameraman enough time to take this live dynamite far away and detonate it there. I think Titan threw him away. Otherwise, he would have blown himself up. We see that there are helicopters on the roof. Apparently, the whole squad has stopped and is waiting for the Titans to deal with this before flying on. Apparently, they flew to the spot where G-Man was in Episode 60. The cameramen then gave the information to the Titans and they flew to find the toilet base there. But now G-Man wants to distract them, so he gets their attention and lures them into traps. Why do you think these four weak helicopters showed up here? I think they came to clear the area. The plan was that the Titans would be badly wounded by the explosion of this decoy. Then the helicopters could finish them off with their rockets and fly away. But things didn't go according to plan and the Titans were unharmed. I was expecting to see how Cameraman's new cannon worked, but instead he fired from his finger. Yes, it's a slow projectile and easy to dodge, but against weak helicopters it's enough. It was also a reference to episode 23 because the Skibidi toilets behaved the same way there. They first appeared with frightened faces and then started running away, and then Titan threw a finger blast at them in the same way. Titan Cameraman is clearly in a good mood. He gives thumbs up to the POV agent. But Speaker Man is in a hurry for some reason, and that gesture seemed kind of rude to me. He's like, hey, have you forgotten why we're here? Let's go get G-Man. Idiot. I hope the Parasite's long-term influence hasn't taken its toll on Titan. I've noticed little oddities about him. For example, in episode 58, he didn't wait for Cameraman and flew off to deal with things on his own. In episode 59, he paused before shaking hands with Cameraman. I hope this doesn't mean anything and I'm just imagining stuff. They are definitely chasing G-Toilet, it's noted in the video description. But I'm sure G-Man is setting a trap for them. He'll bring them right to Skibidi the Scientist. Meanwhile, Speaker Man is hurrying Cameraman to fly there and is nervous that they'll be delayed. The helicopters are also on the rooftops. The Titans flew after him without a squad. Well now we're getting to the most epic part of the episode. When Titan was destroying the helicopters, Defuk's face appeared on all the billboards around. This is exactly the picture from his YouTube channel, Avatar. And here he is standing in front of us himself, and he's not even hiding. Notice how he is getting closer and closer with each episode. Before he was hiding, and it was very difficult to see him. Now he's standing in front of us and smiling. He's also wearing glasses before he was standing without them. And at the end, we see him disappear into the air. He's teleported to where the new episode's going to be, I'm sure. But I still can't figure out which side he's on. Hopefully he's helping the Alliance, and we'll see that soon. Or maybe he's just watching and leaving clues for the viewers. By the way, my Instagram followers see some secrets before the video with analysis is released. Also, there are already a lot of us in my Discord server. You can join our community. Thanks for watching. Put a like and subscribe to my channel. That was me, Isotoilet. See you, my friends.